In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at a Duesenberg style trim system from Geiger. I'd like to thank Geiger for reaching out and sponsoring the video, sending me one of these trim systems to install on this Festley FLP 350. So what I'm going to do now is give you a closer look at how this trim system comes, what you can expect if you buy one, how to install it, and a full review. Let's dive in. All right, so what we're going to do now is take a look at what you can expect to receive if you purchase one of these. And as you can see here, this is the actual trim hardware. This is the tailpiece. Spring-loaded. The paint on it looks pretty good so far. I don't see any issues with that. You receive, obviously, a trim bar and a bag of parts. Now, within that bag of parts, of course, are the Allen key tools, which you will need to make this bridge work or to make this trim system work. And of course, we are going to have the posts, which if it's anything like the last bridge we did, these should fit without an issue. And there are a couple of what looks like padded stickers in here. Okay, and I suppose these will keep from scratching the guitar's finish and an extra spring. So for the most part, it looks like we're good to go. The only thing I found a little bit odd was the fact that there's no paperwork at all. No instructions, nothing to guide you. And, you know, I mean, for the most part, this should be a pretty straightforward install, but it still would have been nice to know, like, hey, is this an extra spring or is this a spring that's maybe a little looser? There's nothing that tells you anything about it. So I think that's the one thing Geiger could improve on. Perhaps a single sheet just outlining the hardware that it comes with and a very basic install. So the last video I did on this channel was installing a roller saddle bridge from Geiger. And the advantage to this roller saddle bridge is that it helps prevent string breakage and increase tuning stability. It does this because it doesn't pinch the string here down in the saddle. You have these rollers. A standard tunematic bridge oftentimes can cause string breakage and even tuning instability because the string can get pinched down here in the saddle. So the reality is if you're going to be installing a trim system like this, you're really going to want to go ahead and install one of these roller saddle bridges with it. With that said, I'll be sure to leave affiliate links in the description to both the trim system and the bridge. Just keep in mind, I may earn a small commission from it. So let's get the strings off this guitar and the trim system installed. So with the strings cut, we're just gonna remove the tailpiece here. We'll pull all the strings out this way. So we're gonna start by unscrewing these posts here. There's really no need to mark anything like there was when we did the bridge. These just come right out. The presumption is this bridge is gonna go on just like this. Interestingly enough, we have a couple of padded stickers and we don't have any instructions to really tell us where they go. So I'm just gonna try to use some common sense maybe and I could be wildly off base. This is where the, the trim spring is. So right over the trim spring, we're gonna go on the bottom here. All right, and put that foam, that padded foam piece there. And I'm guessing on the back of the tailpiece. If you guys know the answer to this, and maybe I'm wildly off, by all means, feel free to leave an answer in the comments. But you can see how I did it here. These look like they would be the two trouble spots where it may actually touch the guitar. So laying it over the top here, it seems like it's gonna be a good fit. Let's go ahead and put this in here little tricky to work around that so i may have to actually get a flat head to get it all the way down and then we have this one here on the top side uh, we're just gonna screw it down there as much as we can and kill it until it's somewhat kind of tight all right all right so it looks like it lines up pretty good what I'm going to do now is grab a flathead screwdriver to further tighten these down. Those are now tightened down. It appears as though they line up pretty consistently and looking at it. In fact, it looks really spot on. What we can do now is let's go ahead and pop this trim bar on here and we will tighten those down. And this kind of moves rather fluidly back and forth. We're going to tighten this down. I do like the fact that this arm is adjustable. But see, right there, you can see it's, it's hitting the back. I don't know how well you can see that here. It's actually hitting here. 
So what I'm gonna do is slide this a little further forward. It's just gonna move forward enough that it can, that's something to keep in mind there. There you can see right there, there's some pretty good fluidity. Now, one thing I will say is if we don't tighten this down, this bar is rotating in here, so we're gonna have to fix that. Uh, once we get set up and in place, but other than that, you know, so far, I actually, I like the look of it. It seems like it's gonna function well. So with those tightened down, we kind of angled the bar out a little bit. It looks like we are good to go here. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put some strings on it, reset it back up, and we'll see how this trim system works out. So with regards to stringing this, you really wanna make sure that you get the ball end of the string. I'm gonna to try to get this the be as best as I can on here. You really wanna make sure you get that ball end caught in there perfectly. Now's a good time to mention that if you're enjoying the video and you enjoy guitar related content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to follow at Geiker Official on Instagram for all their latest product releases. So we are completely strung up. We are ready to really go through a good tuning process here. It doesn't appear that it's affected the action all that much, if at all. And the string angle actually seems like it might be a little less sharp. So kind of hard to see from here, but I'll try to get you some photos, but it definitely seems like the string angle isn't as harsh. So we will see how that plays out. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and tune it up and do a quick demo for you. All right, so we're just gonna start with the little clean channel stuff. So interestingly enough, I find this trim system to be somewhat intriguing. It feels radically different from any of the other trim systems that I've used before. It's very, very bouncy, very springy, and it's kind of a cool feel. It's definitely unique in that sense. And also worthy of mention is, obviously you can push down on the trim bar, but you can also pull back for about three quarters to a full step raise in pitch. With that said, right out of the box, I feel like it's the perfect settings for what I like. It may not be for what you like, but for what I like, I typically like the bar to hang around here, and then I can just easily kick it out of the way when I'm done. And that's kind of how the setup is right out of the gate. It looks as though there's a, a locking nut underneath here. I'll get you a better picture of it. So I'd be willing to bet you could probably adjust the, uh, the tightness on there. There's also a set screw inside of here which is kind of hard to see the way I'm holding it. I'll get you a better photo of that. And that, I, if I'm not mistaken, kind of tightens up your distance here a little bit. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just a quick uh, little rock riff. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the demos. And then we get into my thoughts on this with the, uh, with the pros and cons and whether or not it's worth your time and money. As you can probably see, things are a little bit different around here at the moment. I am in the process of moving. I've got a lot of echo in here. So I've had to switch mics, change things up a little bit. But what I'm gonna do now is get into the pros and cons of this trim system. So the first pro to this trim system is really gonna be the simplicity of the install. The reality is this really only took a few minutes to do and there were really no adjustments I needed to make. All the hardware fit as it should and it's just something that even if you've never done anything like this before, you should be able to do it. In fact, I had never installed one before and really wasn't sure what to expect. So overall, it was very easy to install. Pro number two to this trim system is going to be that there's no modifications needed to the guitar. The real important part here is that if you ever wanna go back to stock, you can do that without any ramifications to the instrument. Pro number three is gonna be the quality of this trim system. It has a really good feel to it. The paint is thick and consistent all the way around. It just feels like a quality piece. And lastly, pro number four is gonna be, it's just fun to play. Like I really, 
thought it was different in a unique feeling system. It doesn't feel like any of the other trim systems I have. It doesn't feel like a Floyd Rose. It certainly doesn't feel like a two point trim system that has you know some resistance on it. This thing is really bouncy and really like kind of spry, I guess is the word I would say. It's just, it's different. And to me, that was what makes it unique and what makes it fun to play. And I, I kind of like the fact that, you know, it's a single cut guitar. It, it just has a different look to it. So I think if you're looking for kind of an out of the box mod for a single cut guitar, you should probably consider one of these. Now, with that said, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. And like any product out there, this definitely has a few cons to it that you should be aware of before you purchase one. So the first con to this trim system is definitely gonna be tuning stability. Good news is there are a bunch of things you can do to help mitigate the tuning issues with this trim system. The first thing that you can do is a mod that I'd already done on this guitar, which is a roller saddle bridge. Why this is important is because the roller saddle bridge allows more movement with the string. You can see here, that it doesn't pinch the string in any way like a traditional tunematic might, and it allows the string to move fluidly back and forth. Along those same lines, you may want to consider a roller nut. And while I have not done that modification yet, what I did do was put some lubricant on the nut to help with this issue. For this guitar, what I used was Music Nomads Tune It, and this really helped. If you heard probably in one of the demos, you can almost hear the guitar falling out of tune, and this stuff here really helped to prevent that. It works by lubricating the nut to help the string slide through back and forth so it doesn't get hung up and cause some of those tuning stability issues. But the whole point of this was these trim systems can cause some tuning stability issues which you're gonna have to diagnose and buy more hardware for. Which leads us to con number two. You're gonna need some extra hardware for this, right? You're gonna need that roller saddle bridge, perhaps a roller nut, at the very least, you've got to have the roller saddle bridge because that also helps prevent against string breakage. So you need to plan for that. If you're going to install one of these trim systems, you're likely going to need one of those roller saddle bridges as well. And it should be noted that the tuning stability issues with this bridge have nothing to do with the fact that it's from Geiger. Any of these Duesenberg trim style systems are going to have these tuning stability issues. And with that said, the third and final con is going to be that there was no instructions. I think most people can kind of figure it out, but at the same time, it's nice to know what is included and where certain things go, just to give you an idea, or at the very least, a starting point. Of course, you always have my channel to tune in where you can watch me hopefully do it right. But in all seriousness, it would have been nice to know to maybe have a parts list, just so you know that you've received everything you should, and maybe a very simple diagram, single-sided, of how to install this. But overall, I found this trim system to be a lot of fun. Now, who would I recommend it to? Anyone who's looking for a little vibrato, a little bit of trim, you know, to be able to play songs like, you know, the solo from like Yellow Lead Better where the trim kind of makes an appearance. This is really an ideal option, but I wouldn't recommend it necessarily for someone who is gonna go all like dime bag Daryl on it and just slam it. I think you're kind of asking for string breakage and given that you can have some tuning stability issues with this trim system, you're probably not gonna be happy with the performance of it if that's what you're looking for. You know, if that's the type of style that you're looking to play, you're really probably better off buying something with a Floyd Rose or a Kaler trim system on it, something that locks and will help with the tuning issues. This trim system is definitely not catering to that. So ultimately, I had a lot of fun making this video. I'm definitely gonna keep this trim system on this guitar. It's gonna appear in some more videos and shorts that I'm gonna be doing. And you know, it's just different. It's kind of cool. It has a unique feel. And I think that if that's the kind of thing that you're after and you don't mind perhaps trying to add some hardware to it and diagnosing a little bit of the tuning stability issues, overall, you'll really like it. So as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I do try to answer all the questions that come through on the channel. And if you wanna know more about that roller saddle bridge that I installed on here and what you'll need to do to install it, check this video right here. As always, thanks for watching.